I would want to utilize this chance to extend a polite hello to everyone who has returned to view another video on our channel. In January, Good Morning America presenter Michael Strahan and his 19-year-old daughter, Isabella Strahan, revealed to the world that Isabella was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, a rare, malignant brain tumor found predominantly in children. Ever since, she has been candid about the highs and lows of her brain cancer treatment on social media, and after tons of tears, a surprise surgery, and a hard recuperation in late March and early April, her latest vlog gives a light-hearted health update. The video, filmed by her twin sister Sophia Strahan, chronicles a few days in her life at home. I run this house, she joked, strolling into the kitchen and pointing to a sign that says, Isabella's Station. Below it sat a huge basket full with prescription medicine bottles. This is my medicines that I take to stay alive, she laughed. Then, Isabella led viewers through how she makes an evening cup of tea. She used an insulated, covered mug because I have balance issues and I don't want to spill on myself, she said. She then brought out her tea bag of choice and quipped that it's hopefully anti-cancerous because I have cancer. With tea in hand, she walked to her bedroom, where she was assisted with some pharmaceutical injections in bed. This is my room, she said. It's a little messy. Then it was time to choose a movie to watch. The next footage showed the start of a fresh day, one full of doctor appointments. Isabella had already done occupational therapy, she explained, and dermatology and blood tests were on the schedule. She bundled up to brave the elements and got in the backseat of a car. How are you feeling today? The driver asked. I'm feeling, she said. In the video's final footage, Isabella went down two flights of stairs, carefully, hooked up to what looked to be a mobile infusion, an incredible effort considering she was hospitalized due to shortness of breath in early April, she disclosed in another vlog. Just two days before to that hospitalization, she was released after being admitted for a week, during which she underwent an unplanned craniotomy, a technique in which physicians remove part of the skull to access the brain, per the National Cancer Institute. In her case, they did so to remove fluid, she added. Although the surprise procedure, which took place after she went to the emergency hospital for a fever, wasn't as bad as her first craniotomy, she said, she was upset to find that it postponed her final two rounds of chemotherapy. I wasn't very happy about that, she remarked. I was like bawling my eyes out, cause it's just so disappointing when you're like, yes, I can finish by May. And then everything changes because of a simple head infection. So now I'll be done a little later than I intended to but, oh well, I'm home. Wishing Isabella and her family the comfort and support they need to finish her treatment strong. Isabella Strahan is facing new symptoms from her cancer diagnosis. Michael Strahan's daughter, who earlier this week reported that she finished off her second round of chemotherapy for her medulloblastoma diagnosis, is now telling why it's gotten tough for her to walk. I feel like every time I come here, I have a different problem, the 19-year-old said in a YouTube video posted March 27, documenting one of her hospital visits, cause last time it was my head, I literally can't walk without becoming lightheaded or out of breath. So, that's pretty much that. The symptoms were distinct from what she had previously experienced, as her disease originally presented as awful migraines and teeth discomfort. Honestly, I don't know if I would prefer that now, Isabella explained. They're absolutely full opposite symptoms. At least when I wanted to cut off my head, I could take pain medicine. Now I can't use anti-exhaustion drugs. The University of Southern California student has been candid about her cancer experience, which began in October when she was diagnosed with medulloblastoma diagnosis, a cancerous tumor on the base of the brain. Since then, she's grown frank on the adverse effects of her chemotherapy treatments, documenting her every step of her cancer battle on her YouTube channel. 
It seemed like someone had just like yanked every single one of my teeth out, she claimed in a February video, and just sat back in my mouth with no medicine. I practically couldn't swallow water, undoubtedly there were tears over this jaw discomfort. Michael Strahan married Wanda Hutchins in 1992, months before going no. 40 to the New York Giants in the 1993 NFL Draft. Daughter Tanitha was born November 10, 1991, and son Michael Jr. arrived September 12, 1994. Wanda and Michael divorced in 1996, and Michael Jr. and Tanitha largely lived in Germany with their mother. But from day one, it was very vital for me to be involved, to be a part of their life, Michael recounted to people in 2016. I was constantly on planes and phones, and it's very hard, but one thing I learned is, you create time for what you want to make time for. Still, the Super Bowl winner has admitted to some regrets from his days as a young father. I didn't know what my future was gonna be, Michael told Brooke Shields in an August 2023 edition of her podcast What Now? I knew I'd work hard. I knew that if I got an opportunity, I would do my best at it. But it was still tough. He was so young, the Pro Football Hall of Famer continued, and having kids and having all the responsibilities, I do look back, and I do wish I did a lot of things better as far as being a parent, because I felt like there was so many times I should have probably sacrificed certain things in order to be a little bit more present. That being said, Michael continued, then there are times I've looked back, and I think in order to have the life that I've been able to provide and give them, I had to sacrifice a lot of things. Michael Jr. and Tanita later relocated back to the U.S. and attended high school in their father's native Houston, according to People, then studied psychology and art, respectively, in college. Tanita is kind of like me in the sense that she has a very strong personality, but a silent strong personality, Michael told New York family in 2012. She's not going to be one to come into a room and make it all about her. She obviously has an opinion, and she's very smart, and she knows what she wants, which I adore about her. He labeled Michael Jr. a very smart and very particular young man. Ultimately, Michael stated, I have great kids, and they're not the kind who look at my life, and say, daddy's this, and daddy's that. My youngsters are interested in establishing their own way. They have their own personalities and do their own thing. I'm delighted to see that. Michael met second wife Jean at a New York spa, where she was working at the time. They married in 1999, and, as the New York Times reported in 2006, while they were in the middle of a bitter divorce, signed a prenuptial agreement that set aside 20% of Michael's earnings every year to go to Jean should they break up. The defensive end signed a seven-year, $46 million contract with the Giants in 2002. Personally, getting divorced is probably one of the toughest things I've ever gone through, Michael recalled to people in 2016, but it was also a learning experience, and I learned a lot about myself, and I learned a lot about a lot of the people who were around at that time, and some aren't around anymore. On a sunnier note, Michael and Jean welcomed twin daughters Isabella and Sophia on October 28, 2004. Isabella, who's somewhat older, is more playful, very chill, never gets very upset or fired up, Michael told New York family. She's very, it is what it is. And Sophia as always asking questions, very curious. They're both quite brilliant. They love to read all these things I never thought of reading when I was seven or eight years old. And they do it because they're generally interested in it, which is remarkable to me. My kids have a different upbringing than I had, but the love is the same, Michael told People in 2016, explaining how he and Jean had been co-parenting in the ten years since finalizing their divorce. The belief in them is the same. It turns out that Isabella and Sophia, who lived half-time with their mom in North Dakota and North Carolina, had acquired the good-on-camera gene from their father.